music, it's really transcendent, I think. It makes everything that I do in my life better. <laughs> I told you, told you I was getting tougher, told you I wouldn't suffer, told you I wouldn't be the only long crying for you. Got a new man, he's shaking the walls like only he can, and let me tell you I'm a big fan, he's helping me through this let go. I think that's one of the things that's so great about music is that it, like the same song can mean so many different things to different people. And if anything that I write affects anyone, like at all, I think that's pretty special. Probably get drunk, burn the house down. I'm getting rid of you, what match it is up. Being Johnny Cash in a bottle of wine. I always would just go if I wrote something or co-wrote something, um, go back and listen to it like the next day, get away from it. I actually just got a new phone, but in my old phone I probably had like 200 voice notes of like different songs and whenever I was writing it I was thinking like, yeah, this is great, I love this, this is gonna, we're gonna definitely gonna record this song and then I'll listen back <laughs> the next day and be like, Ooh. what was I thinking? <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> John and I were writing like every day. Um, and we would finish up a song and be so excited to share it with Russ and be like, listen to what we just wrote, it's amazing. And then he like would be like, oh, I don't know, guys. it's okay. You know? Like, it's, uh, I don't know if I get it. He would be like, man, you know, think about the second verse might be a little bit better. Well, what are you thinking? I don't know, just, it's just not quite doing it, you know. And usually the song would be better when I go back in. I got in the music industry in the late 70s in Muscle Shoals, Alabama as an engineer and moved into the publishing business and production and now uh, artist management and record business. The most important thing about production is being true to what a song is. You can take a, a song that's a three chord structure and, and make it sound bigger maybe than the, even the artist intended. And I think as the track starts growing, it makes the, the, the performer add a lot more to the song and grow with the record. It has to frame the artist. And, and sometimes when you have a great voice and a big range like Rainy, you can get in the way of that. You gotta kind of stay out of the way and compliment what they're doing. I think it's been interesting to try to like bring a little bit more of electronic and pop sounds into the country genre. So that's something that I'll do like with Russ and John, I'll like play songs like, hey, let's get influenced by these guys a little bit. <laughs> she has a certain idea about how the record should sound, the sparseness and, and whatnot. When we started this process a couple of years ago, you know, it was like whatever you guys think and, and we've shifted away from that because Rainey has a distinct idea about how these records should sound and she's gotten much more involved in the production than she was in the beginning. Being in Nashville and kind of like paying homage to the traditional sound, being in this studio in particular, Johnny Cash actually recorded here. So that was like definitely good vibes. <laughs> Live performance and then recording are definitely totally different experiences. I don't feel any pressure really recording because if you mess up, it's okay. You can sing it like as many times as you want to and make sure that you get it just right. And we have the studio at our disposal basically. So like if I have a bad day, I can come back another day. So if you mess up, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Nobody can hear you except for us. So whereas like live performance, the pressure's on and if you mess up, like that's what the audience's impression of you is going to be. And I think the big challenge too in that is, is being able to capture the energy 
that you get in front of an audience in a sterile environment where you're standing in front of a microphone in a room by yourself. Lucky for us, Randy doesn't have a problem with that. She sings the same no matter where she is, and I think we've all been amazed at how well you do that, as a matter of fact, because not everybody does that. The good news is she's excited every time she writes a new song and every time we go in and sing, so she sings it like she sings it in front of a thousand people or just us. Me personally, I, I try to act like it's a regular gig, but it's not. <laughs> it's a grand old opera, so. Honestly, I've been thinking a lot about like, what am I gonna wear? <laughs> and, <laughs> but I don't feel worried about like the performance. I guess I feel confident as a singer, but I guess I'm, I've been thinking a lot about like just what the experience is gonna be like and having the opportunity to like play at such an incredible, venue and something that means so much to country music and to Nashville. It just feels really special to be like a part of it. Every artist I've worked with that went and did their Opry debut, they had all done a lot of shows and been in front of a lot of people and they were completely prepared for it until they walked on the stage. You know, you think you're ready and you go out and all of a sudden, <laughs> what the hell, Russ? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? I was feeling great about it, but now. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Then they That's broke funny, down, man. laid down on the floor, <laughs> cried like a baby. I told you, told you I was getting tougher. Told you I wouldn't suffer.